Hey, Miles here, milesbeckler.com, and this video is about analyzing your website's page load speed so you can optimize your website to load quickly. Google cares about how fast your website loads, and Google does reward websites that load more quickly than websites that take a long time to load when all other things are considered. This means that if you've got the same domain authority, the same page authority, the same kind of ranking factors that are identical between two websites, one of them loads in a second and the other one loads in five seconds, the site that loads in one second is probably going to rank higher. So if you're wanting to optimize your WordPress site or your website for page load speed to get better rankings in Google, this video is gonna show you where to look and how to find out kind of what to do in that situation or you might be just using your website as a user. You might be testing it on your phone. You might be kind of looking at it on your website over or on your laptop over and over. And you might just be feeling like, ah, it's kind of loading a little bit slow. I want to speed up my website. This video is going to help you identify those things that are slowing down your website so you can know where to focus your attention. Um, I have not optimized my personal blog for page load speeds. So we're going to go in and kind of run the report and I'm going to talk you through what I see from this report that I use. I use a very specific report that's not the Google report. And I'm going to talk you through what I see and let you know how I'm going to approach improving my page speed times. The goal is you're going to be able to run this on your site and kind of analyze it in a very similar fashion. And you're going to see exactly how to identify that which is holding you back so you can speed up your website also. So enough for the intro on this video. Let's get in. The first place we start is our homepage. I want you to go to your homepage specifically exactly how it loads. So take the URL from the top bar and copy it. Yours may load HTTPS, it may not. Yours may load with the www, it may not. Again, you want whatever your URL loads as to show up here. And then we go to GT Metrics, G-T-M-E-T-R-I-X, and it's a free page kind of analysis tool and I'm gonna paste in the URL and I'm going to click analyze. What it does now is it runs it through multiple different tools. There's a page speed tool, the Y slow tool, and then something called a waterfall tool. <clears throat> now you're going to, we're going to get a grade is the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a grade for your website and I'm not expecting good grades because I have not done this and it's okay if you don't see good grades. So right here, I've got straight D's, right? I'm, I'm not really passing here and that's okay. My load time, you might wanna note these numbers down. So as you make changes and you work to improve it, you can track your progress. So this is the baseline. 3.4 seconds is kind of an obese website. It takes a long time to load my homepage. And that's partly because I've done some customization to the homepage and it's a little bit image heavy. I'm gonna show you exactly how I know that. Um, I'll show you data that backs up that hypothesis. But I would love to get this closer to a second and a half or a second or below. Um, and then the page size, right? Like 2.16 megabytes. I would love for this to be a one megabyte um, page, but I'm kind of image heavy and the way I've got my homepage built and I like the way it's built, I know that it's never gonna be really small and I'm okay with that. So again, the first thing is um, I'm consciously making compromises because I want my website to load. I like the imagery here. You can see there's a big background image. This is a high resolution image of me. I've got four icons that all loads. And then below we're pulling all of these images and we're pulling things from my blog roll. Each one of these is a call to the server and it needs to import that information. Now, if I turn this down to only loading six of these, it probably would speed things up, but let's go into the data and let the data help us kind of see what's going on. So the first thing you're going to notice is right here, I've got my page speed score, which is kind of tool number one that they run it through. And this is the results from page speed here. The first thing is optimize image and serve scaled images. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what that means is that my images are not necessarily optimized for web. I'm probably or possibly using 120 DPI or 300 DPI images when I could compress those down to 72 DPI images. If you're a Photoshop user, you would use the save for web tool on all of your images. So I'm going to have my design guy go in and actually save all of my images for web. The other thing is serve scaled images. What this means for me is that my server and theme are having to resize images on the fly. For example, the image that is actually 
this little tiny image here, the how to start a successful WordPress blog, this is the real size of the image when I click and load. So when my theme loads this thumbnail that's shaped like this, my theme has to go calculate and compress the size of that image on the fly. If I could hard code in a thumbnail for each one, a smaller thumbnail at the post level and tell my theme to pull that, um, it would speed things up. But if I lost you right there, because that sounds super technical, it is, right? I would need a developer to go in and do that. So I'm probably just going to ignore that and move along happily. The Y slow speed is this score here, right? So this is tool number two that it analyzes with, and it gives more kind of ideas. Um, I don't think I talked about the requests. I like, I like under 100 requests. Um, this is how many times it has to ask the, th ask the server or a server for a piece of information, whether it's an image or what blog goes in this little thumbnail section or what, you know, what sits in the thumb bar, the footer, the, the header, the navigation, et cetera. Um, each one of those is a request. So the least number of requests possible, the better, because it's just got less things to load. So here we can see make fewer HTTP requests. That's saying, get this number down, use a content delivery network. Now I'm not using one on this website. On my main website, I use two content delivery networks. I use Amazon's AWS, which is their um, Amazon web services. It's essentially a very high performance cloud server that delivers a lot of my images. So it's not all coming from my web server. I also use Max CDN on that site, which does the same thing. So my theme files, a lot of my images, instead of it all loading from one server being really slow, I use CDNs so I can load all those bits and pieces that make up my website. I load them from different sources. I'm obviously not loading that here. That is something I'm going to configure. Um, I'll probably make a video on that to show you how I do that because it's really it's really quite simple. Um, cookie free domains, not gonna happen. I'm a marketer, I, I run cookies. And you can see the rest of them are, are okay, right? Like the rest of them are actually fairly good. I've got a lot of good scores, but I got some bad scores. Now here's where we really get into the data that is the most kind of actionable and the most valuable. Now. We're going pretty deep into a tech hole. It's okay, you can do this. All you really need to do is you're looking for the really long colored bars because that means something's lagging. So right here, my first one, this is an example. The, the length of the bar is a visual representation of the time that whatever this task is takes to load. So when it says I made 84 requests, I believe that means that I have 84 lines of things that happened, right? These are all of my requests. And you can see some of them are really short. They happen really quickly. Others are a little bit big, right? Half second here, half second there, it all adds up. And then some down here, you can see like this one was 1.39 seconds, not a good thing to have load. So the way this waterfall report works is when your page loads, it starts essentially at the top, it starts at the header text, and then it works its way down to build all of the body copy. And then it works all the way down through the code to the footer and everything at the close. And you're seeing a representation. So this is in order, right? This happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. So when we have something that slows down and then other things slow things down. This is how we take time. So your goal is to look for the really long ones. So like right here, I'm noticing this is a long block of slow loads. I want to analyze that. And then down here, another long block of consistently slow loads. And then here's a really long item. And we're going to look into how to figure out what these things are so we can optimize them in the future. But first I want to talk about this first one here. Um, essentially you can see that each color in this report has a different meaning, right? So the blue is the DNS lookup. So that means we type in my URL and all of a sudden the computer goes and looks at the domain name servers to look up milesbeckler.com. What IP address is that from? Where, where, what server, right? An IP address is essentially like, it's, it's the computer equivalent of GPS coordinates. Like the, where I'm sitting right here, there are GPS coordinates that are my exact location on earth. Your IP address for your website is your exact location for your website on the interwebs on your server. But you and I can't remember IP addresses that easily. So we mask them with domain names. So milesbeckler.com is a easy to remember kind of mask for my IP address. So looking up the DNS is you know, 18 milliseconds, very short. Connecting is also a pretty short situation. There's a long waiting period for some reason. So when I connect, 
there's a long period of waiting and then there's a really quick receiving. So I can find out what is what are we waiting for? There's two places I would go look into this. I would email support at my web hosting company and I would say, hey, I'm, I'm wondering why my domain name gets stuck in this waiting position. I would send them a screenshot of this exactly right here. The second place I would go is email my domain name registrar. Now my server and my domain name are with different companies and I'm guessing it's because I've got those at different companies that that's why it's taking so long is because my server talks to another third party, the third party talks back. One of those computers is lagging. I can find out which one that is, move my domain over to a registrar that's that's kind of at the exact same place that I host it, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is how you do it. You, you've got to play detective at this point and dig down and figure out all these little bits and pieces. So. It's normal to see uh, a lot of line items. It's normal to see a lot of things here. Again, what we're looking for is large kind of groupings of different items. Um, if you want to start to learn what these things are when you hover, it gives you the exact URL call. So this one I'm hovering over, you notice it's WP content forward slash themes forward slash rise child forward slash CSS. So what this tells me by looking at that URL is it's my WordPress theme my child theme and specifically is my CSS, which is my cascading style sheet. That's the, the, the text document of code that organizes and makes my site look pretty. So this one component in my style sheet takes a third of a second to load essentially. So these are the kinds of things and you're never going to stop your style sheets from loading. But if I ran a CDN and that style sheet came from a high performance server and not from my web server, my website could load it and these other things at the same time. So again, one of the first things I'm going to probably do is add a CDN here and then rerun this tool and it'll eliminate or actually minimize a lot of these, um, these things but I can still find some other things that, that can be put on my to-do list on how to optimize my site here. So I'm gonna scroll down some more and I want to look at these big blocks here because these are you know over a half second each, 0.617 all the way up to 0.76, almost 0.8. There's a lot of time right here. In looking at this page load speed, like yes, this is a consistent block of items, but they're all much shorter, right? They're, they're smaller lines, they're shorter lines. This is, there's a lot of time loading here. So what are these things? And when I hover over it, sure enough, email marketing featured, top10books.jpg, um, create awesome courses with this simple framework. Let's take a look over the website. It's these here, right? It's literally these images being pulled in and that's a part of my theme. So how many of them are here? I can go look, I'm like one, two, I don't know, 10 ish, 12 ish. How many do I actually have here? So I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So I've got 18 of these images that are required to be pulled in every time my site loads. First thing I'm thinking is, well, what's the quickest thing to do is cut it down to six, right? If I cut this down to my six most recent only and I get rid of these bottom, like, I don't know, what, however many that is, instantly there's going to be less things for my website to load when it loads my homepage. I'm gonna eliminate a third, two thirds of these kind of longer things and boom, I'm better. So how do I do that? I've got a developer guy. He's the one who built that custom theme for me. And I'm going to ask him to cut the number of um, thumbnails that are showed on that blog roll. I'm going to have him cut it down in half. That's going to eliminate a bunch of these, but I'm still curious why they're taking so long to load in the other tool we were looking at. If you'll remember at the page speed, remember optimize images, there's no optimization here. So another thing I'm going to want my developer to do. And honestly, back in the day, I did all this myself, right? I'm just in a position that I've got a lot going on in my business and I have a full-time developer who can do this. Um, I didn't know how to do any of this and I dug in and figured it all out. I will go in or he will go in to each one of these main images when it loads. So I clicked on this. This is the actual image size that's coming through. I'm going to make sure that every single one of these featured images that display on my blog are hyper in hyper optimized, which means that they're saved for web in Photoshop. They're a maximum of 72 dots per inch. And essentially I'm going to make sure they're the smallest file size possible. I'm using as much compression as possible before I upload. So when my web server loads them, it loads snappy, nice and fast. 
So there's two things I'm going to do there in addition to the CDN and in addition to reaching out to my web host and my domain registrar to figure out why that's lagging. Let's go down a little bit farther here and we're kind of at the bottom of the report and here this one is what is this track cmp.net so this is some sort of tracking and i don't actually know what this tracking is and this is where we get into um ah okay so this is active campaign tracking right so i have installed on my website and this is on all my websites and and the same with like Facebook pixel tracking or Google analytics tracking. Um, all of these tracking pixels that we add to our website, they all take time to load. This is a snippet of code that needs to load. It reaches out and communicates with active campaigns servers. Active campaign is who I'm using to manage my website or my email list. And the, the reason I have this in place is when I send you an email, if you click and visit a website, active campaign knows that you clicked on the email and you visited the website. I can create custom audiences based off of this kind of data. I can kind of do interesting retargeting based on the website data. I'm currently doing none of that, but I have the infrastructure in place. So is there a way for me to speed up the page load time? Uh, you know, there is a tool called Google Tag Manager that allows me to put my Facebook code, my Google Analytics code, and also any other tracking code like this one into one container. All that loads is one container that has all the three pixels. It can slow to, it can speed up my load time instead of pulling pixel A from Facebook, pixel B from Google, pixel C from my email service, it would load one pixel and then on the back end, it would load everything off of Google servers, speeding things up. And this is literally, this is the game of page speed optimization. It's a lot of staring at a screen that makes no sense at first, looking at, at weird lines of code and ideas of like, I don't even know what that means. Then what do you do? I copy the URL, I go Google it. Why is this URL, right? I would do why is forward slash WP admin forward slash admin dash Ajax taking so long to load on my site. This is the game. It's kind of, kind of difficult work, right? Like we are really, this is grunt work. This is a lot of uncovering and discovering those places in your themes, in the images that you're using, in the plugins that you're using, you're able to visually see here on the screen, what's slowing you down. And once you have a list of the biggest kind of users or abusers of your server's resources, then you formulate a unique plan to eliminate them, to speed them up, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a massive learning process. I was able to off the fly identify that one, setting up a CDN is going to speed up a lot of these things because I'm going to take that weight and that burden off of my web server and put it onto a high speed cloud. Number two, how I have my homepage designed having 18 different thumbnails on my blog roll is simply inefficient. I can cut that down to six, maybe nine, cut that load time. I will easily remove a second or hopefully a second and a half from that alone, optimizing my images, and then looking at the idea of how do I take all my tracking pixels that are also taking time to load and maybe merge them into Google's kind of tool that they have, um, Google Tag Manager and loading that once instead. So this is the game and yours is gonna look different than mine and you're gonna notice sometimes that it's a plugin or two plugins might be fighting for resources. You might see that one plugin is taking an extremely long time to load. Uh, you might want to get rid of that plugin. You might wanna test a different plugin that does the same job in that situation. There's really no, um, I've, I've tried to hire people to do this job for me and it, it never actually worked. Um, it, there's no easy way to go about this. I do think that GT metrics has somewhere on their site. They say, um, you can reach out to them for, for help with, uh, with your page speed, uh, times I've never gone through that, right? They, they have right here, contact us for optimization help. Um, and they'll, they'll help you kind of go in that direction. There is sometimes the possibility of paying for like a, a turbo level on your server or a faster server. When your website gets to the point where you're running one, two, 300 concurrent users for most of the day, you probably will want to up grade to a virtual private server or a dedicated server. That way you have 100% of the resources of that machine, or at least 25% of the resources. Um, cause if you're just on a shared server, there's the odds are you have hundreds, if not thousands of other websites 
all using a portion of the kind of server resources. So there's a lot of different angles that you have to go, but the easy places to start is to look at this GT metrics tool, identify the big long bars in the waterfall report, take a note of the things that they recommend in the Y slow and the page speed reports, add your CDN, make sure you're optimizing images, look out for plugins that are fighting for resources and taking really long times to load. And when you see those things in your waterfall report, like I just found that are really long, either a big groupings of long load times, like right here, or these really long items, you need to dig in and figure out what they are. And then you need to formulate a plan on how you can potentially speed up those processes, leveraging third party servers like CDNs, leveraging uh, third party tools like Google Tag Manager or different plugins that accomplish the same goal, always looking out for page speed and load times. Once you've made some changes, come back into the GT metrics tool, rerun it, take an idea. And what you'll find is there's new things that are taking the longest, right? When you, when you take those long things and you compress them down, now something else is the longest. Um, you're never done. This is not something you do once and you're finished. It's something that you need to kind of continue to work with over time. I do revisit this tool once a year, every six months for my wife's website, because it's something that as we add more content and as we add more plugins and more functionality to our site, we ultimately are slowing it down. So it's, it's going in and cleaning out those things we can and, and making sure that what we're doing is as optimized as possible. And you learn new habits, right? Like um, saving your images for web, for example, is one of those habits that you learn and really just monitoring this kind of identifies like, oh, every time I do that, it seems to slow things down. Let me go look for a plugin that doesn't have that component built into it. Um, I've even emailed plugin creators, uh, for example, like the, the social media plugin I use called Social Warfare. Uh, I was on three or four different social media plugins that were loading really, really slow. I identified from this tool that it was clearly the social media plugins that I was using that was taking so much time. They were all trying to do way too much. Um, I identified the line item in the script that was lagging. And when I found the Social war Warfare plugin, I emailed them, I was like, hey, I've got a problem with this. Does your plugin use that functionality? He was like, no, not at all. I installed it instantly, our, our website sped up. That took me like days, if not a week or more to figure out. But since we've made that change, that website loads a lot faster. We get better rankings, everyone's happy. So that's the name of the game. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope this has been valuable. If you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up here in YouTube. I appreciate that kind of engagement. Um, any questions here, feel free to hit me in the comments below. Um, I don't really have uh, any magic skills to be able to answer like, what does this line item mean? Go to Google for that, do the research. You gotta dig in because it's your site. There's certain things you've done and you've got on your site that, that slow things down and you need to figure out what those are for yourself. But um, overall theory in page load times, hit me with a comment. I'm happy to uh, chat about that. Um, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe. Or if you have subscribed, click the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you get the uh, notifications here in YouTube when a new video is published. And I just hope this has been helpful. This is one of those kind of like down and dirty, in the dirt, kind of, you know, dirt under the fingernails types of jobs that I've been doing for years, years and years. I had no experience in this area. I don't know anything about server administration. I, I don't have a computer science degree, none of it, right? Self-taught 100% by finding like, okay, that looks like it's slowing things down. What the hell is that? Um, and then going in and just spending a lot of time on Google and going down the rabbit hole and YouTube and figuring out what those things are, why they're causing the slowdown and what my alternative is that would be a lot faster. Um, this is how I've learned my best practices. This is some of the, the dirty grunt work behind the scenes that the fake gurus don't tell you uh, is real, but it, it is real. And this is the stuff that, that I've been dealing with for years. And um, welcome to the party, I guess. You can do it. I know that because I self-taught myself this stuff. And um, you're never going to get it perfect. There's always going to be things slowing down your site. Like we are loading assets from a variety of web servers. So keep that in mind, do the best you can and just revisit every once in a while and revisit this video every time you want to, um, and just track a little log of what you're doing. So have a notepad somewhere, have a Excel spreadsheet or a word document somewhere that, you know, the date you ran the test, what your numbers were, what you identified, what you changed, let it sit for a day, a week or something, go back, rerun the test. And every time just keep, keep kind of adding to that log. So you got like a, a log of all the changes you're making. And so you can see if you're trending in the right direction or if something you did sent you in the wrong direction, you've got a little log of what you did. So you know how to kind of flip that back and, um, and fix any errors that you've, you've 
maybe created for yourself along the way. Uh, that's it for this one. Thank you very much. I hope it's been insightful. I hope you've learned a lot about page speed, load times, and all that fun stuff. Any questions, hit me in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video. So until then, be well, and thank you again for your time. I really look forward to connecting on the next one.